Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you a little bit of an adventure that I have had during the month of January. Today, uh, the day I'm filming is January 9th and it has been so interesting. So I want to share with you why I'm on my declutter journey and uh, what I'm doing during the month of January and just give you some more details about what I've done and some of the perils I've faced. Okay, so you've seen me decluttering my house, my 15 minute declutters, my craft room declutters, and I am on a mission to get this done. And so the way this started was clear back uh, in October and November, our whole family went on a nutrition, a food detox. And I had, I was becoming very ill and we went to see a doctor and uh, took tons of blood tests and everything. And I had several deficiencies and a lot of issues. And so part of what we were doing is this crazy, very restricted food detox. And the whole family did it and it was not easy. But what happened, it was, it was 28 days, so four weeks of a detox. And, uh, wow, I started to understand a lot more about what I ate, why I ate. And through the course of that detox, after about 10 days, I started to feel so much better. And the first changes I noticed were in my mental health. And uh, we've done so much research. We had done quite a bit of research before we did this. And since then, about the connection between our diet and mental health, our lifestyle and mental health. And part of that is our clutter and our surroundings. Well, I learned so much during our food detox that I thought, hmm, what would happen if I did a financial detox? And so that's what I'm doing during January. I decided to go an entire month, the entire month of January, without buying anything. I'm on a spending fast, or uh, some people call it a spending ban or a buying ban. And that is what I'm doing during the entire month of January. So there are a couple of little ground rules that I laid down for myself. One was that I would still buy food, uh, our vitamins and medicine, those things that we need for our just basic health. Although we will not eat out, I won't buy anything uh, like a prepackaged dinner. We're, we're doing it from scratch, you know. And so uh, those basic things for health, I will still buy. Uh, and the other thing is gas, because we have a busy family. We're going here and there. We've got to get uh, kids to places. And it's just, I know that we're going to have to buy gas. Though I am trying to drive less uh, and where I am not shopping, there's less reason to drive the car. And so um, I am, you know, shopping at the grocery store, but uh, I really am driving less. And so I noticed I'm not buying as much gas. So that is a very good thing, but we still have places to go and people to see. And so uh, we will buy gas. Those are the only two things, the, the food and nutrition that we need for basic health and gas. We're not eating out. We're not going to movies. We're not uh, paying to stream a movie uh, in our own home. I'm not buying anything, nothing for crafting, nothing for no books, nothing except those basic nutrition needs and gas. And so it has been very interesting. Today is January 9th. So far, I've done really well. I haven't bought anything except food. And um, it actually is a little bit freeing. Like when I'm watching a video or something and someone shows me this great new thing that I have to have to uh, make cards or do whatever, I'm just like, no, not going to buy it. And then my mind has become even more engaged in, ooh, could I create that thing instead of having to buy it? And so uh, I feel like the the necessity of greater creativity uh, has come with not being able to buy things. And I've kind of really liked that. Okay, so one of the perils though, if you're going to do a shopping ban, make sure you kind of 
prepare uh, beforehand. So here's something, and you may have seen this in my uh, declutter videos. My hair is a problem. <laughs> and uh, December, I, I was determined to go get my hair cut because it was looking so bad and, and it's embarrassing to film when my hair looks so crazy and people comment about my hair. So what I decided to do is I thought, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my hair cut. But then December happened and the holidays and visitors and I was so overwhelmed and so busy and uh, was kind of struggling to get myself back into focus and into some kind of plan. Our routine was completely thrown off. So I didn't get my hair cut, but I had already decided to start the uh, shopping ban in January. And so January 1st comes, I'm like, ha ha, today I'm going to start this. And then right around the third, I went, Oh no, my hair, I didn't get it cut. And I'm not going to pay for a haircut. And so, I mean, I would normally, but not during my, uh, not during my buying ban. And so I decided to have my daughter, Kate, cut my hair. And so now before, you just look at these pictures. I mean, my hair was ridiculous and very embarrassing. And in fact, uh, one time I was filming and Anne looked at me and told me my hair was really weird. <laughs> I know, it's weird. <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. Okay. <laughs> Anne thinks my hair looks weird. It does. So I decided, you know what? I can't wait until February <laughs> after my shopping ban to get my hair cut. And so I convinced Katie to go ahead and cut it for me. And so a couple of days ago, uh, we went and I just told her what to do based on what I had seen the uh, hairstylist do when I was there. And so I just kind of tried it and I said, okay, let's try this. Let's cut here, let's cut there. And Katie did, she was such a good sport to do it. I promised her that uh, I wouldn't be upset. If I'm gonna be upset at anybody, I'd be upset at myself because this is my fault. And so she wouldn't be able to mess up because if there was a, if there was a problem, it was my fault. So she went ahead and cut my hair and it was very interesting and actually pretty fun. So here I am and yeah, there are some things about it. I went, oh yeah, I really don't know what I'm doing uh, when I'm trying to cut my hair. <laughs> but it was an interesting experience. It forced me to be creative. So comment below on before and after and so what you think of the new haircut and um and maybe what creative things you would do uh to be able to stay in a buying ban uh when things get a little tough Another thing that uh, I'm going to have to be creative about is uh, Katie is going to go on a mission trip to Africa. She's going to be gone for quite a while and she is required to bring with her a first aid kit. Uh, I didn't think about that first aid kit for Christmas or something. So I'm going to have to pull together a first aid kit for her to take to Africa. And um, so I'm going to have to be creative with the supplies that I have in my rather extensive first aid cupboard. I do, a, and you may have seen my first aid uh, kit video from I think last summer. So I actually have quite a bit and I think I can pull together a nice first aid kit for her. So one of the great benefits of a shopping ban is to be able to really bring out some creativity. And I think that's really important for us for our mental health is to use creativity. And I think that that matters. So if you're going to do a shopping ban and I challenge you to do it, pick when. So you're going to pick when you're going to start and when you're going to end. I decided to do the month of January because I thought that was easy. And uh, you could pick any uh, span that you want. You could do it for one week. I feel like any period of time is going to be enlightening. So I set my ground rules of when and what, what, what things would I buy 
uh, and what things would I not? And so I only did those two things of our uh, basic nutrition and um, health and then gas and everything else is no. And so we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's the ninth. So I've gone over a week without buying anything. And so far, it hasn't been that hard. A lot of people that I've listened to, I'm listening to a lot of psychologists that talk about our mental health and our stuff. And uh, the more things you can include in that, I'm not going to buy thing, the better, the more dramatic uh, your financial detox will be. And so uh, that goes along with that a little bit is to embrace the risk. I realize that uh, there will be times when I go, oh, I should buy that and I'm not going to. And I'm going to embrace that risk of not being able to buy and we'll go from there. And then the other ground rule I'm laying for myself is uh, at the end of January, I'm going to re-enter slowly. I'm not going to just go ahead and go out and start buying things. I'm going to see if I can extend that shopping ban for a time and just re-enter into the uh, consumer world very gently and then be more mindful of what I'm actually buying. Now, during this uh, financial detox, as part of the whole thing, I'm also going to look at my bank statements and start to track what am I buying? What am I spending money on? And uh, I'm going to work with my husband during this time to create a budget and see if we can get more money into savings each month and just see if we can start taking action so that our financial situation just flat out is better when all is said and done. And so that's the basics of doing a buying ban, a financial detox. So if that's something that you are thinking you may do, be sure to make comments below and give this a thumbs up if you're thinking of a shopping ban or if you've done one and share with us some of your results. And just one thing I want to point out, just because I'm going more minimal and trying to pare down just the inventory in our house, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop creating. Because for me, crafting is part of mental health and just enjoying life. But boy, I am really seriously looking at what I own as part of crafting and what I don't need to own. And so you're going to start seeing uh, more of minimal crafting. Uh, and that's kind of what I want to do and not creating a lot of clutter for the house or clutter for others as a gift. I hope that explanation of what a buying ban looks like will help you and please join me. And if you are a subscriber, Thank you so much. I so appreciate that you join our channel and that you are part of this. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. There's so much more coming up. And of course, my minimalist crafting. And so subscribe and give this a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.